how to use the new tiny umbrella to save your SHSH blobs and what it may mean for the future of iOS downgrading. What is up ladies and gentlemen, this is Jeff Benjamin with iDownload Blog. I am so excited because Tiny Umbrella is back folks and you can find it on our downloads page if you click downloads at the top of iDownload Blog. You can scroll all the way down here and you will find a link to Tiny Umbrella if you don't already know the link. So you can just click here, that'll take you to Tiny Umbrella's page. There you'll find a, a blog post about the Tiny Umbrella read write. Now this release is in beta right now, uh, but it's very exciting because it basically means you can save your, what is called SHSH blobs. And these blobs in the past have been used for downgrading your device. So say, say Apple released, uh, or say iOS 8.2 became jailbreakable. Like there was a jailbreak for iOS 8.2 and then Apple released iOS 8.3 the next week. And then that fixed the jailbreak or fixed patched the holes that were used by the jailbreak for iOS 8.2. Well, if you use Tiny Umbrella in theory to save your SH, SH blobs, you could in theory downgrade back to iOS 8.2 if you for some reason accidentally upgrade it to iOS 8.3. So that is why this is so, so uh, promising. Now, the developer of Tiny Umbrella isn't going as far as to say that this does this right now because it doesn't, but he's alluding to the fact that there are some definite big things on the horizon with regard to hopefully downgrading, yes. Uh, so that is exciting. But before we even think about that, let's just navigate Tiny Umbrella right now. Let me show you exactly how to use it. Let me show you how to download it first of all and install it. And let me show you what you'll need to use this. So right here on the main Tiny Umbrella page, you see some links over here. If you're a Windows user, you'll see links for Windows. If you're an OS 10 user, you'll see links for OS 10. Obviously I'm using a Mac right now, so I'm gonna use OS 10. You wanna just go ahead and download the OS 10 app only. That's what I recommend. So I'm gonna do that right now. Just click that, that will download the app. Now you'll also need Java 8. So you wanna just go over to Java's page here, which is on Oracle's website. And I'll have a link to that in the post. And then right here you see it for Mac OS 10. And then you can just download the uh, DMG file for that and install Java. Now, obviously, Java has been associated with security things and stuff of that nature. But if you want to use Tiny Umbrella, this is unfortunately the only way to do that. So uh, you could always disable Java, like once you use Tiny Umbrella to save your blobs or just uninstall it altogether and just only use it when you want to save your blobs or manage your blobs or use Tiny Umbrella. So that is an option. So just keep that in mind. So I've already installed Java. I've already extracted tiny umbrella and dragged it to my applications folder so we're going to launch tiny umbrella right now i'm going to just minimize a safari and here is tiny umbrella right here so i'm just going to click on that and the interface looks quite a bit different it's still somewhat similar but it uh, looks a little different than what we we're used to in pat in the past with tiny umbrella uh, the interface is a lot simpler there aren't nearly as many options and basically all this does is you just plug in your device and it will just pull down all of the blobs for the currently signed firmware for your device so that means uh firmware as of this video like ios 8.1.3 and ios 8.2 now, even though this device, this uh, iPod Touch is on 8.1, I believe, uh, it still will only pull only the signed or the currently signed firmware. So that means that iOS 8.1.3 and iOS 8.2, you won't find any 8.1.2s or anything like that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just plug in my uh, device to my Mac. Obviously, you will need iTunes installed as well. So I'm plugging in right now. And immediately you see where it says connect it and it recognizes the device. You see it fetching SHSHs and yeah, there you go. That's it. That literally is it. Uh, so you can see the device here, Jeff's iPod, and you see all the SHSH blobs here uh, underneath. So you see 8.2, 8.1.3, and then there's the different types of blobs. So you have an erase blob, you have an update blob, uh, you have OTA blobs and there's lots of OTA blobs. So it'll save all of those. And unlike previous versions of Tiny Umbrella, it actually saves all the blobs in one particular file for each ECID or each device, which is really cool. 
Um, so I'm actually going to show you where you can go to find the location of your blobs. Uh, again, these are just contained in one particular um, one file, basically a gzip plist file in XML format. So I'm going to show you those here now. So what we'll do is we'll just minimize Tiny Umbrella. Uh, we'll go up to our Go menu in Finder and then go to Folder. And here is the well, this isn't the path, but uh, we'll go. We'll get to that in a second. But here's the path to uh, Tiny Umbrellas uh, folder here. So it's uh, tilde slash period because it's a hidden folder tu slash and then you want to type in period because it's hidden sh sh just like that and then uh, click go so here is the blob or the the, <laughs> the combination of blobs uh, for that particular uh, device the ipod touch so this is not something you can just double click on and open and view uh, but you actually have to rename it to a zip file, extract it, and then open it to view the actual proper XML format. But we won't get into all that because that's unnecessary. But just rest assured that all the blobs, all the the saved blobs are in this one particular file. Unlike times past where you would have all the different blobs here listed for every single one, well, it combines them all. So it's actually a lot better this way. You don't have a whole bunch of files to manage with and finagle with. Everything's just contained in one particular file. Now you will have different files for each device, uh, so keep that in mind. So if I have another device plugged in, I will have two instead of just one. Um, so that's uh, that's new. So I think that pretty much covers everything. There's no beta support for iOS betas thus far. Um, let me think if there's anything else. Let's see. I uh, think that's it. Oh, let me show you the known devices, okay? What you saw earlier. So I'm going to go up to Go, go to Folder. Instead of SHSH, I'm going to type in known devices, okay? So this will basically save uh, all the known or previously connected devices out there in this folder. So that means that if I unplug my iPod Touch here, okay, so it's unplugged, not even connected to my Mac, I close out of Tiny Umbrella, shut it down, and then I relaunch Tiny Umbrella, guess what you're gonna see there in the history? Where you're gonna see Jeff's iPod because that is saved out under known devices. So even though I'm not connected, any device that I have hooked up, or that I previously hooked up will be listed here for reference. Um, so there's no way to delete this directly from the application interface, but if you want to get rid of that, then what you can do is you can just go out of here to the known devices folder, and then you can just delete this um, plist file there. It's not actually a plist, it's a zip file, but uh, you could delete that, and you could also, of course, delete your shsh file as well if you want to. Um, I recommend keeping both of those out there. There's no real reason to delete it unless you just want to get rid of the history on Tiny Umbrella. Um, but yeah, that's an option. So when I load up Tiny Umbrella this time, there is no history because I deleted the known devices or everything under known devices. So I hope, I know that was, this was like drawn out and long, but um, I hope that answers most of the questions with Tiny Umbrella. Oh, Tiny Umbrella no longer runs as root, so hence that new directory. It used to be just uh, uh, SHSH was the directory, and now you have the TU slash SHSH. So just a little side point there. Um, let's see. Oh, Tiny Umbrella also will try to fetch signed blobs on every startup. Uh, but if you already have those blobs, it'll just skip over them. So... Uh, remember, this will only pull in signed SHSH blobs or blobs for signed firmware, currently signed firmware. So just keep that in mind. So I hope this little tutorial was able to give you some new information about Tiny Umbrella. Obviously, there's a lot to learn still, uh, even more so about like why we need to save these blobs. Obviously, um, the developer of Tiny Umbrella has some big plans in the future with regard to hopefully downgrading. So we look forward to that. Uh, but in the meantime, go ahead and save your blobs, folks. Go ahead and get out there. Even if you don't use them, it's better to be safe than sorry. Go out there and save your blobs uh, right now. Download Tiny Umbrella, install Java. Yes, it's, it's painful to do that, but uh, go ahead and do that so that you have a downgrade uh, potential downgrade path potential uh, for the future. So folks, let me know what you guys think about the new Tiny Umbrella. Are you excited about the future of jailbreaking? It looks really bright in my opinion. Let me know what you think. 
This is Jeff with iDownloadBlog.